and troubling news, particularly in recent weeks from our neighbour. Reports of violent clampdowns on anti-corruption protesters, the arrest of a number of journalists and human rights organisers in recent weeks, and growing concern over a planned protest for tomorrow. Well, I'm joined now by human rights lawyer and a member of the MDC. He's the Treasurer General, Dave Coltart. Good evening, Dave. You're joining us from Bulawayo. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, the 31st of July, it's a big anti-corruption and poverty protest. I understand it's already been declared illegal. Do you know, is it going ahead? I think it will go ahead, but uh, we've seen massive action countrywide with the, the army and police deployed, pretty much cutting off uh, the major cities, preventing people from uh, getting into the central business districts of, of all our cities right across the country. So I think it's going to be very difficult for uh, any mass demonstration to take place tomorrow. Uh, but there's a groundswell of discontent, and I think that you'll see perhaps what I would call popcorn protests right across the country. I'd like to speak to you, uh, Dave, about uh, what's going on with journalist Hopewell Chinono. He was arrested uh, recently. Now, I understand that your son, Doug, has been um, representing him along with Beatrice and Tetwa. Um, are you able to tell us what the latest is with Hopewell and also with your son, who has been arrested in the course of trying to defend Hopewell? Uh, well, he, just to correct that, he hasn't been arrested in trying to defend Hopewell as such. Uh, he has been arrested twice in the last year defending teacher trade union, uh, uh, teacher trade unions. But uh, coming back to, to Hopewell's case, uh, Beatrice and Tetra is the lead counsel. My son is a junior counsel in the case. Uh, it was the bail appeal before the High Court was meant to be uh, argued today. The state said that they weren't ready, and so it, it has been postponed again. Uh, we believe that this is uh, another tactic just to keep uh, people like Hopewell in prison uh, so that they can get past this demonstration day of the 31st of July. What charges is Hopewell facing? Uh, he's, uh, fa the main charge he's facing is a charge of trying to uh, incite uh, violent demonstrations. Uh, of course, the, the charges are completely spurious. Uh, I follow his Twitter feed, and I've never seen any uh, tweet or any other document or anything that he's written ever suggesting that he has incited violence. Uh, he has, of course... Uh, called along with many others for this uh, one-day peaceful protest tomorrow. Uh, but, but that has been turned on its head in the state of trying to say that he's calling for the, the violent overthrow of the government. He's not the only journalist in Zimbabwe that we hear of being arrested, and we know about uh, uh, civil rights organizers. From South Africa's side of the fence, it looks like the political temperature is rising in Zimbabwe. Is this true, or is, has it been really bad for, for quite a while now? Sally, we're facing a perfect storm in Zimbabwe. As, as you know, we've been facing economic collapse for, for months. Uh, we've got inflation running at, at almost 1,000%. Uh, we've got 7 million people who are facing food deprivation. That was an, an FAO and United Nations figure as, way, as far back as, as December. Uh, and then on top, of, on top of all of that, we've had uh, revelations of massive corruption uh, in the last four months, uh, particularly corruption around the uh, misuse of COVID funds, uh, which has really angered people. And then, of course, finally, uh, we've had the action of the government uh, regarding COVID. Uh, the Minister of Health has been implicated in this corruption scandal. Uh, he was fired eventually by Menangagwa, uh, ironically, after pressure put on him by Hope Wilchinono. But he hasn't replaced that person. And our hospitals are totally ill-equipped. We have doctors and nurses on strike. And so we have, we have the combination of all these factors, which uh, ha has been building for months now. Uh, and, and really, it, it's, it's reached this uh, extreme crisis that we face uh, right across the country. And uh, it's resulted in this call for this demonstration tomorrow. Now, also this week, uh, we hear that white farmers who had their farms taken are to be repaid, a, and this is a, a deal worth some $3.5 billion. 
obviously this has been welcomed by farmers. Is this, I mean, it seems in the midst of all this, this difficulty, surely this is quite a positive development. I know you've been involved in this. Tell us more. Well, in theory it is, but bear in mind that ever since Manangagwa came to power, he's been engaged in an elaborate game of smoke and mirrors with the international community. Uh, he said that he was committed to tackling corruption. He said that he was committed to democracy and free and fair elections. He says that the country is open for business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he was he said that he was committed to resolving the land question. And I'm afraid I have a somewhat cynical view regarding this agreement. Uh, farmers themselves, of course, are desperate. M many of them are destitute now. Uh, many have been off their farms for 20 years. They've never received any compensation. And so they're desperate to, to be uh, paid out something. Uh, the government as well realizes that they won't uh, be able to engage the West and institutions like the IMF and the World Bank until they tackle this crisis. And so they've come up with this uh, agreement this, this week to compensate uh, white farmers some 3.5 billion uh, United States dollars. It, it sounds good, but the question I have is where's this money going to come from? Uh, we can't even pay our teachers in the country, so uh, one is hard pressed to understand where they're going to find the money to, to pay uh, white farmers. Uh, so we, we think it's just a ploy to paint themselves in, in the best possible light with no real plan uh, to raise this money. You know, until they um, tackle some fundamental issues in Zimbabwe, for example, giving title to land, they are not going to be able to finance this amount. And quite frankly, our own national coffers are empty, so there's, there's no domestic money available for this. And what about the, I read somewhere that they might sell uh, the, uh, or cash in some of the, the government bonds, that sort of thing. Is that an option? Well, the government bonds are pretty much worthless. This, this is a, a government which is, is bankrupt. Uh, we've got a currency which is rapidly depreciating. Uh, the Treasury bills that a government has issued are pretty much worthless in, in real terms. So, once again, I stress this is a smoke and mirrors game. It's designed to, uh, to deceive. And there's, there really is no substance behind this, in my view. You know, I think that um, the world was hopeful that uh, when Robert Mugabe um, was removed, let's put it that way, that there would be perhaps a change. Um, and, you know, we've heard so many difficult things coming out of Zimbabwe for so long. And you have been one of those people who's been involved for a very long time. And I'm just wondering if you look back at, say, the last 20 years, has it ever been worse than this? Or have there been bleaker times than what Zimbabwe currently faces? I don't think it's ever, ever been as bad as this. And, of course, not all of that is due to Manangagwa and ZANU-PF. Uh, the whole country is facing the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which underpins everything uh, in, in this country. But certainly the economy hasn't been as bad as it, as it is uh, since certainly 2007, 2008. But on top of this now, we have this dreadful shortage of food. And the current economic collapse has come, of course, on the back of the collapse in the late 2000s, uh, 2007, 2008. So people had their initial savings decimated then, and now they've been decimated again. They just have uh, less uh, resilience. And then on top of that, uh, quite frankly, Melangagwa has been far more brutal than Mugabe. Uh, in, in my view, his government is far worse. It seems astonishing to say that, but it is worse than Mugabe. Uh, and, and so you've got this unique, unprecedented uh, combination of events. And, and arguably, uh, the country is in the worst state it has been since independence. Dave, you were saying that, uh, you know, your son, Doug, who is uh, the junior counsel helping Beatrice uh, Mtuetua to uh, defend Hopewell Chinono, who's still in prison. Um, I'm sure you are concerned for his safety, as he has been arrested a number of times. Are you concerned for your own safety, telling us these things this evening? Uh, Sally, I've been at this uh, for 37 years since I returned to the country in 1983, and I, I represented Joshua Nkomo in Zapu in the 1980s. Uh, I've been uh, detained myself. I, I've survived four assassination attempts in the last 20 years. So um, we've been through this before. 
uh, it, it does give you a very thick skin. I'm obviously concerned uh, for my son. Um, but let me say this, that uh, many thugs are bullies. Uh, they're bullies, and most bullies are cowards. Um, and ironically, whilst it's not absolute protection, interviews even like this are a measure of, of protection, uh, because uh, this regime tends to go after the marginalized, the people who have a lower profile. And that, of course, uh, gives me some protection and my son uh, some protection. So whilst we're not completely immune from attack, uh, we are less vulnerable than uh, people who, for example, are living in the high-density suburbs who, who don't have a profile. I need to mention uh, tonight Ndodosi Matutu, uh, a journalist uh, who, as we speak, is in hiding. Uh, the regime uh, raided his home about an hour and a half ago. Uh, and so we, we're very concerned about people uh, like him, Duduzi, and, and others who, who have a lower profile and are very susceptible to this type of abuse. Well, I just want to thank you for your time this evening and uh, for, for giving us such a comprehensive update on the situation in Zimbabwe. That's a human rights lawyer, also Treasurer General of the MDC, the opposition movement in Zimbabwe, Dave Occult.